Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's Windsor Cope monthly meeting. Tonight, we are going to be talking about go bags for humans and for your animals. And our speakers tonight are Nancy Brown with Sonoma County Department of Emergency Management and Julie Atwood of Halter Project. I am Diana Borges. I am the Windsor Cope uh, community leader. And the way we're going to do this tonight is um, our speakers are going to come forth, um, talk about their specialty, and then I will speak a little bit about Windsor Cope. And at the end, we are going to open it up for a discussion. And, you know, we, we want to hear your questions. We want to hear your concerns. Uh, how can Windsor Cope help you? You know, it's just an open discussion of not just necessarily about the topic for tonight, but anything emergency related. Um, so I want to pass it on to Nancy now to uh, start her presentation. Thank you so much and so happy to be here and so excited to see the Windsor Cope getting up off the ground and um, people joining and community being formed through emergency preparedness because it's uh, certainly something that's super important in Sonoma County. I'm going to attempt to share my screen, which worked perfectly in the practice. Let's see if it works the same now. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Perfect. So um, yay for rain. Uh, super excited to see that we're um, getting rain this week. Um, no idea yet how much rain we'll get, whether or not that will be a, a fire season buster rainstorm for us. But regardless, it always just feels so good this time of year to see rain and to be able to let out a deep sigh of um, relief that this season we um, were passed over for any major fire events within the county, although many of the people living in border counties and other areas throughout Southern California did not have such luck. Emergency preparedness um, is, is critical because the one thing that I want to really bring home and to help you understand is that the effects of disaster are not predetermined and there's not nothing you can do about it. Um, there is maybe limited things you can do about certain types of disasters, but how you weather that and how you get through that and how you make it to the other side has a lot to do with the preparation that you make in advance. So looking at preparedness as the tool that you can use to combat disruption from disaster is what we're here to talk about tonight. And more specifically, we're going to talk about go bags. And um, go bags are something that Sonoma County has shown to be very interested in. It's something that's really important when you look at fire hazard as one of your major hazards, because in a fire, um, very often people are evacuated. And when you're evacuated, you're given just a very short period of time sometimes to get out. And you want to be able to be sure to get out with the most important things, as well as those things that you will need over the next few days as you seek to find shelter and resettle somewhere else as the fire passes through the area. So having a go bag is really critical for you. It's critical for your family. It will help you get through whatever you need to get through over the next few days and can also help you in recovery based on what you've put in that bag itself. So I'm going to give you the basic list of items, but let me just tell you right up front, don't spend a lot of time writing these down. You can go to socoemergency.org um, on our Get Ready page. You can find the list there. You can print it. Um, there are lists all over the internet. Um, we also have evac packs, which are available at all the libraries that have a personal planning guide with the go bag um, details also in that. So it's, it's pretty easy to get a hold of the list of what should basically go in there. So what we're really going to talk about a little more detail today is different ways that you can customize this go bag for you. And I'm going to talk about a few different products and some of the pros and cons in those products so you can make an informed decision about specifically what you're going to put in your go bag. So, so here's the list. And as I said, please don't write it all down. But these are the basic items. But which I want you to think about instead of the list itself is think about the concepts. The concepts are having to do with if you are away from your home without um, a, a lot of other resources at your disposal, what do you need to get through three days? OK, so this is really what the go bags for. The key piece here is this three day piece. You need to be able to carry it and move it. So this is not the same as a shelter in place kit, which will get your family through at home for seven days to two weeks. This is something that you can take with you. And as you take it with you, you're able to be sure to um, have the most important things that are really going to make a difference. So, for instance, um, I wear contacts. 
If I don't either have contacts or glasses, I will have the blurriest and the worst three days of my life. So that's critical for me in my go bag that I have, you know, not just one pair of contacts, because what if I lose one, that I need a couple of pair of contacts. It may be hard to get to stores. Stores might, might not be open. So we can't necessarily rely on being able to easily go get something if we forgot it. It's much better to take this time when we have a rainy day to really think about what's really important to us. And that's really when you're making the list. So this is the generic list. This is the list that basically is what you want to keep in there. But the key is to make sure that this list is right for you and that it has the important things that you find will get you through three days. So that's just really, really key here. And I really want to bring that home for you. So one of the first items I want to talk about a little bit is food. And there's a few different ways to go here. So at the top of the list are um, food rations. So these are meal bars. Um, they usually give you six or nine little squares. Uh, you eat it, it's enough nutrition to keep you from being really, really hungry. Um, they taste fine, they taste a little bit like cookies. Um, so they're not horrible to eat or anything, but it, it's really not much of satisfaction, but it doesn't take up a lot of space. And the other thing that's really good about this is it has a five year expiration date and it's pretty inexpensive. So for less than eight dollars, you can have food for three days tucked in your go bag, taking up very little space. Now, depending on who you are, that may or may not be right for you. So again, let's talk about what's right for you. For some people, they like to do the groceries from the store to put into their go bag. So this could be soup, this could be canned things, foods that you like or foods that are important for your health. One of the things we don't wanna do is we don't wanna end up sacrificing our health in the middle of emergency and combining that with still another emergency layered on top of that and end up in an emergency room with gut issues. So if you have specific dietary needs, the, the food rations might not be the right choice for you. You might wanna really customize what's going in there to make sure that you maintain your health while you're away from home and you don't end up feeling ill at a time when you already feel a lot of other emotions. Now, this could cost you, um, you know, eight to twelve dollars to, to do this. One of the things that's a downside of this particular kind of food, though, I think it's important to note is um, there's only like a two year expiration. Some food only has a one year expiration. So you're going to have to actively replace these foods regularly. Hopefully you choose food that you like so you can put those right into your kitchen cupboard and buy new food to put in your go bag. But um, you want to look at, you know, those foods that that are best for you. And then the last thing is um, MRE. So meals ready to eat. Now meals ready to eat tend to be the most expensive. So they could cost as much as 30 to $60 for three days of meals ready to eat. So they're 10 to $20 a piece for one meal, which is what you would have for a single day. They have a great shelf life. They're completely self-contained and they're a lot more interesting than food rations to eat. So if you like to eat food and you like to have a hot meal, you know, this may be a great choice for you. I did want to go ahead and, um, open up a meal ready to eat for you. And let me just stop sharing for a second so I can kind of show you what's in these meals because I think it's, you know, you go buy one of these and you don't want to open it and ruin your $20 worth of food. So let me tell you a little bit about what's in one of these meals ready to eat. So um, it comes with a, a package of utensils. So you have the utensils, you have a little piece of candy, a Smarties candy there. So that's kind of nice. Um, here's a little package of sugar cookies. Um, this particular one has a um, cracker. Now, I've had this particular cracker. It's really hard to eat, so not a delicious Ritz cracker, but that's really the only thing in here that's not delicious. Everything else I can say is absolutely delicious. Here's some dry foods, um, fruits and nuts, a, a little grape powder to put in your water bottle, and then the um, piece de resistance is this hot meal. So it comes in a pouch like this. And it also comes with a heater bag. And what you do with this is you take this meal, you put a little bit of water in this heater bag and you slip this meal in here. You put it all back in this box and you wait 15 minutes. And by the magic of chemicals, this thing really gets piping hot. So you do have a really nice hot meal to eat and it's very casserole -y. So this particular one is jalapeno uh, curried beef, which I've had before. It's got a nice flavor to it. It's a, like a, a beef stew. So, um, you know, certainly if it was cold, you'd feel like that was a great meal. If you, if you get a lot of comfort from warm food, you'd feel like that was a really great thing that you did was to have that meal ready to eat. So I would suspect that most people would find the best way for them to go would be some kind of combination of these. 
um, that, you know, if you really just want to push the easy button, then the food rations are definitely a great choice for you. Um, if you need something that's a little bit better for you and for your health, then I would look at some of these other two options when you're thinking of what food. Now, remember, again, you're not trying to have a um, gourmet lifestyle for three days. You're trying to have just enough food so that you're OK, because once again, we need to be able to carry this go bag. Next, I'm gonna look real briefly at water. And you do have a couple of choices with water also. And I kind of broke it down for you a little bit. There's basically three ways you can do water. So you can do just a standard water bottle. Now, one of the nice things about the standard water bottles is they're pretty inexpensive. Um, they don't have a great shelf life, but you can also refill them. So if you have three water bottles in your pack and you come across water, you can fill them up. Now you have three water bottles again. So that's the nice thing about it. You can seal the top. Um, mostly they don't leak. I know occasionally they do, but um, it's, a, it's a pretty easy button to push. Now, canned water in a go bag is going to last almost forever. It's like a 50 year expiration for most canned water. They cost a little bit more. They cost a dollar, but still, that's not the end of the world when you're looking at um, just enough water for you to drink for a few days. Now, remember, this is not the same as one gallon of water per day per person, which you would have in a shelter in place kit. Most of us cannot carry a bunch of stuff plus three gallons of water. Those three gallons of water are intended to be used for cooking, for cleaning, for hygiene, for all these other things. We're just talking about a few servings of water so that you don't get dehydrated over a three day period of time. Now, the last choice would be these pouched waters. These are also designed specifically for emergency kits. They have a five year expiration, so that's pretty good. Um, you can water your plants with them when they expire and buy new ones. Um, they don't particularly cost a lot of money either, so they're a pretty good choice as well. Next on the list, we're going to talk important about medical needs and your go bag. So if you take any prescriptions, um, whether they're life-saving or for your convenience, it's super helpful if you have either a copy of your prescription or a picture of your prescription bottle in your phone with you so that if you run out of the medication, if you're gone a lot farther from home, you have a place for the pharmacist to start to figure out how to refill your prescription for you. Um, also, if there's uh, any, any life-saving medications, you want to make sure that in that go bag, you have at least three to seven days worth of that prescription in there. So depending on how your prescription runs, some pharmacists will give you a few days of extra if you tell them you're building a go bag, and you can just rotate that medication in and out of your go bag, um, depending on its expiration date or you may um, need to just rotate it without the extra. But it's really important because when you're in a hurry, again, we don't wanna compound your um, need to go to the hospital because of an emergency at the same time that you've also had to leave your home and are, you're caring for your family and these other things. You wanna to try to really maintain your health as best you can. Um, if you have needs for glasses, hearing aids, batteries, all of those types of things, make sure that you recognize those. Um, I put, as I said, contacts are really important to me because my glasses, I don't see as well as I do with my contacts. So I always put a couple of extra pair in my um, go bag. And if I get a new prescription, I rotate those out and put new ones in. I also have an extra pair of old glasses. So the last prescription is in there, which will do better than nothing if I were happen to forget my glasses on my way out the door. So if you have um, you know, the last generation of those things that you can put in your go bag so that if you do happen to forget them on your way out the door, you have a fallback position. So um, that last bullet, I say you do you, and that's because I don't know what your medical needs are. I don't know what your special needs are. For some people, there's, there's specific vitamins they need to take to maintain their vitality. So whatever that is that's important to you on a daily basis and would really make you feel unwell if you didn't have that available to you, make sure that you find a way to rotate that into your go bag if it has an expiration date. Next, let's talk about important documents. Now, there's a few different ways to do this, and we all know that um, in the event of a fire and, and should you lose your home, all of those documents um, may or may not survive depending on how you keep them in your home, if they're in a fireproof safe, that type of thing. But what's really important is that that's not your number one concern, that you have a backup plan for those documents. So in some cases, people like to have physical paper copies. And you know, there's, there's a good thing to think about because you don't need anything else if you have a physical copy, right? You don't need electricity. You don't need another device to do it. You can show somebody, 
here's my ID, here's a picture of my passport, here's a picture of my driver's license, here's a here's a here's an actual copy of my insurance binder. So, um, you know, having that physical copy can be great. They don't take up a lot of space. So I think for certainly for some documents, um, in addition to an electronic copy, maybe having a paper copy is a great idea. Um, now, the thumb drives are a great way to store a lot of important information. One of the things I have on thumb drives is I have copies of my photo albums because photo albums are important in my family. And um, I would hate to lose my photo albums. I do not think there's a chance in the world I would carry them all out in a hurry because there's a bunch of them. But at least I have copies of those pages that I can refer to to try to restore those at some point in the future. Um, also, other important documents having to do with your birth certificate, with um, uh, wills and testaments, so you're, all those types of documents that you think are important that you're probably keeping right now in a special box in your house somewhere, make a copy of those and um, then either have a paper copy, a thumb drive, or of course, you can even just take a picture with your cell phone. If you have a smartphone that has a good camera, you can take a picture of it. Please make sure the picture is in focus from time to time. When we take pictures with our phone, we move at the last second, and the picture ends up out of focus, and that will always be the most important picture that you need to have a copy of is the one that you um, don't do. But keeping in mind, a thumb drive requires a computer, a computer requires electricity, so if you need to access this information without that, that may be difficult. A cell phone also requires that it be charged, so um, both of these, in order to access that information, they require one other thing to go with them. Next thing I'd like to talk about is what you're actually putting this in. And these are three of the most common choices. So the first, of course, is a backpack. And um, they, you know, if you get a decent sized backpack, the cost is moderate, you can carry it on your back. So that's pretty good because that gives your hands free reign to be able to move around. And that's kind of important. Um, the large tub, I know a lot of people who like to have this tub, it's in their garage, they plan to just load it into their car quickly and leave. Um, and, and that's a great choice. And it's, you know, it's also a useful container to have with you should you need to store other things in addition to what's in there. Um, it's also typically waterproof. The one thing is, if for some reason you're not able to get your car and you need to go down the street with your belongings to get in somebody else's car, you're going to have to drag this tub. So um, keeping that in mind and what that's going to look like and whether or not you um, can carry the tub actually, or if you've made it so heavy that you can't actually even carry it any longer. And then the third choice, and this is, for instance, what we use for my mom, uh, is a roller bag because everybody needs to be able to carry their own if at all possible, because if you have four people living in your household, you should have four go bags and everybody should have those things that are important to them in their go bag and they should be able to move that go bag. So um, my mom has a go bag that has the things that are important to her. Um, we do carry her water for her, so that's okay. So it's a little bit lighter, but you know, she could drag this even if it was an uneven surface, she could still drag it pretty well um, in order to get it to the next place, whether it's somebody else's car or our car. So that roller bag is your third choice. And so this would be something about the size that you could use as a carry on. Don't think in terms of great big giant bags of things. If you have a lot of time and you want to pack other things um, and you want to use some of those bigger bags, that's a that's a discussion for other things you might take in an evacuation. But when we're talking about a go bag, remember the fact that you can go with it is key to this particular piece of equipment. I did want to just briefly touch on how important it is that you stay informed. So um, in the event of an emergency, of course, if you are signed up for SoCo Alert and you see the uh, address right there for you, it's important to be able to get those notifications from SoCo Alert that will let you know when you need to um, get out, get up, wake up, recognize that something's going on. And the other thing that we're doing more and more of um, in the county, and I know there have been also available in Windsor, um, some NOAA weather radios. And the key here about the NOAA weather radio really is that it's a redundancy that's critical because it doesn't require cable or cell connectivity in order to work. It's a completely different system based on radio waves in a different radio tower in a different place. So if your cell tower runs out of power, 
And um, if these other things go wrong, this NOAA weather radio still has an opportunity for us to be able to, in your home, wake you up in the middle of the night with a loud noise to let you know something's going on and you need to get up and pay attention to what's happening. Um, we, of course, also have Nixle, which is offered by our fire departments and our sheriff's department in Sonoma County, which you can sign up for. And then we use the emergency alert system as well as the wireless emergency alert system, all great ways to make sure that you stay connected. And then I know, of course, Diana is going to talk later about another important resource in staying informed. And that is, of course, working within your neighborhood to make sure that you are helping each other get the latest information, stay up on what's happening and recognize when there's a situation that needs your important attention paid to it. Um, knowing your zone is the other important thing that I did want to punch right here. And if you have not looked up your zone before, you should look up your zone. Um, you can go to socoemergency.org slash evacuation dot dash map and put your information in there in order to look up your zone. And then please write it down somewhere um, so that you can be sure to understand when you get an alert over one of these systems we just talked about that you will actually be clear on whether or not this includes your home when they're sending those emergency information over, because it's gonna be very simply something like SON 3G2. And so if you have not looked it up yet, that will not give you any information. But if you do know that you live in SON 3H2, when that comes across, you know exactly what's happening and that that does not involve you at this time. So that's an important thing for everybody in Sonoma County to know. Um, I of course know both my work and my home, um, zones because they are different. And um, it's important to also share that zone information with families and friends because they'll be concerned and wondering whether or not you were in an evacuation zone. And if they know that information, that makes it easy for them to determine what's happening for your home as well. Um, I am going to leave it there. I'd like to encourage everybody to please join or start a cope group in your neighborhood because this is really the most important thing that we can talk about is how we help each other get through these things. And we have seen over and over again over the last few years that um, your person that lives across the street and next door to you is somebody that's really important because they are your very first responder in an emergency and they're the people that can help you should your plan go awry, should something unexpected happen, that they are there for you to help cope with whatever has happened to you. Um, here is my contact information, so please feel free to reach out to me if any of you have any questions about anything or would like to talk about um, anything having to do with emergency preparedness, I'm your gal. So I will stop sharing at this time, and I would like to introduce Julie Atwood, who has been an amazing partner in Sonoma County and has done so many wonderful things for the community uh, in all different emergency preparedness way. But of course, her real speciality is pets and animals and um, livestock and how to really be sure that you've done what you need to do in advance to keep these very special animals in the safety zone. Julie, take it away. Hey, Nancy, thank you for that really awesome introduction. And thank you to everybody who's joining us. So first, I just want to say that everything that Nancy has shared about personal preparedness applies in some way to your animals. We're going to focus on pets tonight because in Windsor, um, more of the community members have small animals than large animals. Um, don't worry, we've got information for you large animal owners as well, but that will be a different day and a different topic. But pretty much everything you do for yourself, you need to do and think about and prepare for with your animals. And of course, if you have multiple animals and different species, it's a little more to think about. So Diana saw this video. We have a lot of preparedness videos on our website, halterproject.org, and she liked it and asked if I would share it with you tonight. So we're going to watch a video. It's a little more than 10 minutes long. And I want to preface it by saying that this video is about my preparedness and my recommendations to people who have primarily dogs and cats. Most of the things that you do for your dogs or cats are going to apply to your other small animals as well. And this video is filmed at my home. I do live in the country. So not everything that I do and not all of the places and the spaces that I prepare myself and my pets for are going to be relevant to you. But the takeaway message is that look at your surroundings 
and decide what is going to work for you. Where is the best place for you to store all of your preparedness supplies, both your go kits and your stay crates? What's the best way for you to carry things? Are you going to be able to carry everything safely? Are your hands going to be free so that you can hold your dog on a leash or lead your parent or your grandchild? Um, all of these things are really important. So when you watch this video, think, okay, that's how she's doing it. What would work for me? Or that's where she's storing it. What kind of space do I have at home in my garage or my closet or my laundry room? So the whole concept about preparedness is to make sure that it works for you. So we're gonna watch a video and at the end of it, we're gonna look at a few ready kit slides. And again, don't worry about taking notes or taking pictures because everything that we're sharing with you, you can find on our website, halterproject.org. We're happy to send you materials. You can download them and print them for yourselves. Or if you'd like to share things with your neighborhood group, um, your book club, your school, or just your, uh, you know, your card, your card buddies, then we'll be happy to make up kits and bring them to you. So let's watch a video. Oh, that looks good and sounds good. Okay, welcome back. We've talked about the importance of getting your animals into a calm, quiet place when you're getting ready to evacuate. So here on our ranch, I kind of work in two stages. During 2017, I had a cat in the house. The first thing I did to keep him from bolting out the door was put him in the basement. I knew the basement would be safe for a while. He really likes it there. It was one of his happy places. And I knew all his hiding places. So I just opened the door, stuffed him down the stairs, put a bowl of water there and left knowing that that was one animal who was okay for a while. Then I made my way down to the barn. The barn cat was already in for the night, got him into his carrier and brought him here. The same thing was taking place with the ranch dogs as well as our ranch manager's dogs who came with him as he was evacuating out. So this is a stall, it's actually a horse stall. It's got rubber mats in our covered arena, which is our shelter in place place. So it's big. Is it ideal to have the cats and dogs together? Not really, but for a short period of time, keeping everybody in one place is a good idea. If you do have to put animals who aren't really comfortable being next to each other together, it's a really good idea to have some blankets or towels or tarps that you can put over their cages. So we always keep a variety of towels. You can throw them over a carrier and now you have a calm cat. You can also do the same thing with your dog kennels, okay? So we all know that keeping our animals calm and having a dark, cozy place is gonna be helpful to them. We always keep extra crates and carriers. So I might move the animal in a small carrier and then transfer it into a larger carrier. In the case of the dogs, they go into these kennels. So once they're here, I make sure that I have their ready kits. I have an extra set of ready kits that I keep packed in a crate. So all I have to do is grab the crate and bring it down here. So I have, guess what? Here is my kitty go kit with all the kitty meds, the calming meds, um, some treats, their grooming needs, everything for the cats. A little bit bigger one for the dogs. Okay, this actually has more food in it. It's got a couple of slip leads. We've got a thunder shirt. Um, we actually have extra medications. And I have room in this one to actually put some extra towels and small fleece blankets for everybody. So those stay in a crate. I can keep them dust free. Down here, we try to always have extra dog beds keep them in big plastic Ziploc bags. So if one gets soiled, they have a fresh one. Moving in this direction, we've got extra crates. We've got a towel to keep somebody comfy and quiet. I have a book bag. I love these things. So this is my grab and go. It's got all of our pet records. It's got ID in it. It's got a little bit of, of first aid information. I've got a handbook. If you'd like a list, of what's in my pet record bag, write to us or take a look at halterproject.org. 
So moving over, now we're into kitty world. Whether you have a cat or a small dog, anytime you're moving it in any kind of a crater carrier, make sure just for the heck of it, just in case, that it includes identification about you. What's the pet's name? What's your name? How to reach you? Um, if you are evacuating and you end up in a, in a shelter, in an emergency shelter, this is going to be really important. Every once in a while, animals get transferred. Your crate might be taken out and sanitized. If you want to get it back, that's also a good reason to have ID. Another comment I'd like to make about carriers. Make sure they're zip tied. Don't rely on, exclusively on the screws that come with them, especially with these smaller crates. Make sure that you have at least a couple of zip ties. I like to put them on the corners so that you won't have any mishaps. This is where we store all the stuff all the time that we want to have ready so we don't constantly have to be bringing all of our gear over just when it's a red flag. So one of the things that I love most over here is a flexible hose. This thing is really lightweight. You can throw it in a backpack. It's 75 feet long, or it expands to 75 feet. And since we have hoses on the corners, but no hose bibs in here, it's a great, fast, easy, lightweight way to get the water to the animal cages. Love that thing. And we always keep a nozzle on it. So over here, starting at the top, kennel pads, you can never have enough of those. If you have enough room to just throw a package of them in the trunk of your car, great. We always keep some out here. I use kennel pads not only in the dog crates, but in the cat carriers as well. And we also have our kitty litter and a variety of portable and disposable litter pans. This is kind of a cool gadget. If you never seen one of these and you end up at your friend's house you don't have a litter box a portable litter box kind of handy it's really a good idea to keep some five gallon buckets with good screw on lids it's a great way to transport your food and keep it safe also extra cat litter carrying a box or a bag around uh, is a little bit dicey these things can break apart so having an extra bucket is a super idea uh, let's see. Also with my pet equipment, I love to carry one of these. This has extra chargers. It's got a, a Mophie battery pack for my phone. So this is my electronics and it goes everywhere I go. I like to keep one of these down here so that I don't have to run somewhere else to pick it up. This is water. Right here we have six gallons of water and we have more kind of back behind where I'm standing. These can be poured directly from this opening. We also have spigots that attach to them. So if we're going into a red flag, we're gonna bring a few more of these down here. This not only gives us water for our animals, it gives us good drinking water storage for ourselves. I have cleaning supplies, hygiene for the dogs and cats, little bottle of water. I've got pet wipes. I've got some catnip, got lots of extra cat food. So again, a little grab and go, extra leashes, easy to keep clean. I can carry it around with me. We have extra grooming supplies. I like to be able to take care of everybody. I like things to be light. We also have some toys in here. Down on this shelf with my electronics case, this is a backpack for me. So this is not my everything backpack. This is sort of a secondary backpack. One of the most important things I have in here is a lot of extra personal protective equipment. And first and foremost in my list are different kinds of gloves, leather work gloves, big, heavy, waterproof gloves, and then kind of an all-purpose gardening glove. I really worry about my hands. I want to make sure they're protected. Also in here is a um, pair of safety goggles. I wear contact lenses, so those are really, really important. I also have a fanny pack that I can attach to myself with things like sunscreen, eye drops, some band-aids, some lip balm, um, a whistle, and a small flashlight. So this is a secondary grab and go. I know that wherever the animals are, 
that's where I'm going to be. And it, I don't want to have to leave this space to go run after something that I need, like a headlamp or a flashlight or my gloves. So I want to make sure it's here. So that's where I'm going to stage it. The minute there's a red flag, that bag goes here, and my electronics case goes right here. Now we've got a few more things, basics that you just about always have if you have animals, little buckets for whatever you need, whether it's more water, grooming supplies. Uh, we've got more buckets um, for cleaning out the kitty litter. We have poop bags, lots and lots of those. We have a variety of mobile water bottles. Waste disposal is really important. You can never have too many poop bags and you can never have too many pee pads. So it all boils down to it. It's about pee and poop when you're evacuating and sheltering and the same goes for people. Make sure you have your hygiene supplies. So we've got all of our waste management. We've got our food, we've got our meds, we've got our grooming supplies. Last but not least, comfy kennels for the dog with a um, nice clean bed got bowls set up. Little note about the bowls. Always put your bowls just inside the door so that when you're opening the door to the cage, you only have to open it a very, very, very short distance to get the food in. And of course, water, ideally you're gonna have a watering can with a long spout, you're gonna have a hose. So you don't have to open this cage, that carrier up at all to get the water in. Always good idea to have extra treats. Lots of toys and games for enrichment. And because we're here in wine country where it can get warm, I have a variety of cooling pads, including small ones for the cat carriers, because it is really easy for those animals to get overheated, especially if they're in a small carrier for any period of time. I also keep a spray bottle filled with water for the dogs, and sometimes I'll just cool down the area around the cats. This also comes in handy for the horses. And that's pretty much it. You should build your go kits for your animals just the same way you build your go kit for yourself. Tailor it to their needs. One other thing to keep in mind, after our fires in 2017, a lot of my friends said, Julie, you'd be so proud of me. I had everything for my dog. I had everything for my cat. I had everything for my horse. But I ran out without any underwear or reading glasses and no money. So now my friends tell me that they put their money, their glasses, and their undies and their extra socks in with their animals' go kits. So something to think about. Whatever is going to be most important to you, put it in the place where you know you're absolutely going to have it. And ideally, that's going to be more than one location. But with, uh, with me, with a lot of my friends, it goes where our animals go. Thanks for watching and sticking with us through our little tech glitches. Right now, we're going to share very, very quickly just a few of our ready kit um, checklists, which also include first aid items. And again, you can get all of these on our website or just write to us at rescue at halterfund.org and tell me what you'd like and I'll help you out. 
So you can find ready kit checklists for dogs and cats, your pet birds, your backyard poultry, your bunnies, your reptiles, and also pocket pets and just about anything else that people keep. We also have this really great matrix um, comparing the various types of most commonly used pet carriers, something really important to think about. So all of this and a whole lot more is available on our website, halterproject.org. We also have information in Spanish and a few other languages. You can also get our pet evacuation prep kits at Sonoma County Library branches and the main library. You can also find links to some of our presentations at Sonoma County Library and socoready.org. So we're all working together uh, to help all of our friends, neighbors, including our animals, be as safe as possible and ready for any emergency or disaster. So thanks for joining us and hope you have a couple of questions. Back to Diana. Thank you, Joy, and thank you, Nancy. Um, the information you gave was wonderful. And I want to reiterate that all of their, what they talked about is on their website. And uh, they are both very helpful in um, giving you information, directing you in the right place. So uh, feel free to contact them if uh, you have questions after this. Uh, right now, I would like to share my screen uh, and talk about COPE. So Windsor Cope uh, is a collaborative effort of our town of Windsor, Sonoma County Fire District and Windsor Police. And Cope stands for Citizens Organized to Prepare for Emergencies. Uh, so what is Cope? Uh, Cope is a program that was started several years ago in Oakmont with the help of the American Red Cross and uh, City of Santa Rosa Fire Department. And since then it has, uh, blossom throughout Sonoma County. There are groups throughout the county um, and our Windsor Cope is actually part of Cope Northern Sonoma County, which is Supervisor uh, Gore's district. And there are over 45 uh, communities in, in that. Um, uh, we have an advantage for being part of Cope Northern Sonoma County. Uh, there's a uh, dissemination of information that comes through them. As uh, the COPE community leader, I am part of the Northern uh, COPE North Sonoma County leadership. So I'm on a group me that includes all of the community leaders. It also includes several uh, fire officials, law enforcement, um, some uh, representatives from the agencies like Nancy is, is in on that. We have monthly meetings um, and the COPE group me, um, there's a lot of information that's posted on there. And what I do as your community leaders, I take the information that's pertinent to Windsor and I send that out to our COPE uh, neighborhood leaders. And then they disseminate that to their uh, neighbors that are part of their team. Uh, so COPE really is about neighbors helping neighbors. And that's how this works. It's a grassroots effort that helps uh, in preparedness, education, advocacy, training, and planning, not just for wildfires, but all emergencies. So earthquakes, which uh, are a uh, big potential in Sonoma County to do a major devastation if we have a big earthquake, uh, flooding, anything where um, we need assistance for each other. So the program actually facilitated by neighborhood leaders. Uh, each neighborhood leader uh, guides 10 to 20 of their neighbors and, and right in their immediate area. You might have heard um, the term block captains before is the same similar setup. So the neighborhood leaders really are like the liaison person from um, myself and um, our town fire and police and um, sending information down to their neighborhood leaders and uh, to the, their neighborhood team. And one thing that you do as a team, you prepare individually, but you also prepare your neighborhood. You get to know each other. And 
part of the program is uh, you take a survey to find out a lot of different information. Uh, one is uh, resources in your neighborhood. So if you happen, happen to shelter in place, um, who has the tools that you may need? If someone's injured, is there a nurse or a doctor that happens to be nearby that can help? Um, on the flip side, there is also, um, you find out if there's a neighbor uh, that might need help uh, evacuating. Maybe you have a, a senior adult that might need help. Um, so if you collectively work together and you find out that information, you build the community within each other. And to help neighborhood leaders do that, we have a COPE handbook that provides suggestions. And we also have a training video that is on our YouTube channel that can help you. To help uh, all Windsor residents get prepared, we have an emergency preparedness guidebook that is specific for Windsor. So it has Windsor maps. It has the evacuation route maps for, we have four primary um, evacuation zones for Windsor, A, B, C, D, which is also broken up into subzones now. But you can see the table of contents there. This guidebook is very comprehensive. And it goes through um, general emergency preparedness. A lot of some of the stuff that Nancy and Julie talked about is in here uh, because they also either help prepare the guidebook or review the guidebook for us. Um, and uh, the emergencies that you see there, um, a lot of them are, um, there's lists of suggestions for before, during, and after. So I want to talk about a couple of our upcoming workshop in our meeting. I mean, I'll start with the right one first. So we are now doing monthly meetings um, to help our residents get prepared, um, talk about a specific topic each month, and then open it up for discussions. Our meeting for November is going to be on November 16th, and it's communications during emergencies. So the speakers are going to be Jim Bulgari with our fire district and Jeff Peters, who's part of our CERT program. And things that I'm going to ask them to talk about, it's not just the normal communications during emergencies that you might think of, but uh, talking about options when communication systems go down, you know, the cell towers go down, uh, how are we going to communicate with each other? You know, there's the ham radios and that type of thing. And I'm also going to ask them to talk about some of the behind the scenes that happens you know, there's a lot that goes on in a disaster, you know, take, take the Kincaid fire for, uh, you know, when we had to evacuate. So what was the process, the communication between them that happened? Uh, how, how do they get information to watch duty? How does the information get to the radio stations and things like that? So a so little bit of behind the scenes so, so we can understand a little more of what's, what's going on. And what can you do? So, you know, I, I just talked about what we're doing for you, trying to help you get prepared, the town, fire, police, and I. And what can you do? Um, it really takes all of us collectively to be ready as a community. And it takes the residents to get ready, their property individually. And the COPE program really is great at doing that. So how can you get ready? Um, download the guidebook. Um, down at the bottom there are links for everything that uh, I'm gonna be talking about. So you download the guidebook. Um, also sign up to be a leader in your neighborhood. We really need for this program to be effective and for us to get um, prepared on a residential level, um, more neighborhood leaders in, in Windsor. Uh, attend the monthly meetings. We're gonna have those continuing. Um, sign up for to get on our email list. So I send out emails, um, notifications of workshops and things like that. But also, um, if there's uh, different things that come through, through from Cal Fire or PG&E and things like that. So I do send out other notifications. Uh, all of our um, workshops, this uh, video is going to be on our YouTube channel. So go back and look at um, the replays on our YouTube channel.
So uh, at this point, I want to open it up for any questions that you may have. And like I said, you can um, put them in the chat if you want, um, or at this point, just unmute yourself. You know, if you have questions, comments, uh, anything about emergency related, uh, feel free to start a discussion. Diana, yes. um, thanks for the reminder, the mental jog to me to talk about earthquake preparedness because this Thursday, and I just put this in the chat, this Thursday, October 21st, is the great shakeout. So if you haven't participated in the shakeout before, go to a great shakeout on Facebook or go to shakeout.org. That's uh, the website and get inspired and do a great shakeout earthquake drill in your home, in your workplace, in your neighborhood, in your barn, in your garden shed. Uh, there are all kinds of great videos that other people have done in the past. It's just a great way to, um, to step up your preparedness and it's also great team building for your, your neighborhood group. So great shakeout this Thursday. It's always the third Thursday of October every year. And you know what, I just remembered, I'm going to share my screen again because I forgot to talk about the workshop. Um, so this is a big one, November 4th, we're having a workshop at uh, the Senior Center and uh, Nancy and Julie are going to be joining us there. It's going to be given uh, the town fire police and Windsor Cope. Uh, this is for all seniors in Windsor to come. We're going to be giving out uh, go bags and the NOAA alert radios. Um, as long as you know we have the supplies, uh, we're going to have um, a, a discussion, a presentation. But then we're also going to be there to help our seniors um, sign up for the alerts, uh, fill out the evacuation packs that uh, Nancy mentioned, um, and all, all, whatever they need to help prepare. We're going to be staying around helping them. So I ask if you know of any uh, senior to get this information out to them, and especially if you know any seniors that are living by themselves. Um, there's a lot of our residents that are alone living by themselves, and we were trying to reach those people especially to assist them. Oh, Diana, good call. Um, we will be there, I will be there with special preparedness packs for seniors and caregivers. So we'll be there uh, to answer questions. We'll have lots more pet preparedness tips for people who are older. Well, not older than me, because I'm in that demographic, um, but have special needs. So please share the information, um, come and join us and let's get hands on. We can also send you home with some preparedness packets. All right. And then um, to follow up on Julie's earthquake uh, discussion, um, to prepare for the senior uh, presentation, I prepared two flyers. One is what to do during an earthquake and what to do before an earthquake. And uh, though I'll, we'll have those for the seniors, but I will also send those out um, through my email, I'll, I'll, I'll send those out through the email. And the other thing is, you know, if you haven't signed up uh, or liked our Facebook page, Windsor Cope, uh, do that because I post on there several times a day usually. And I will put those flyers on our Facebook page. So I am seeing if there's any questions in the chat. I have a question for Nancy. Okay. Which, which, which food do you like the best? I think I know the answer, but if you had unlimited space and you had a, you had a, you had a person to carry it for you, what's your favorite? Oh, well, I would definitely just do the grocery food then because, um, you know, I like Campbell's chicken noodle soup really a lot. <laughs> I think you're channeling I love the canned rain. tuna really a lot. I mean, there's certain things that I just really, really love. Um, and so that of all the things that were going wrong, that wouldn't have to be one of them. So chicken soup, that's a, that's it's good for a rainy night. And it's definitely good in an emergency comfort food. Love it. Thanks. Well, I love that presentation. I've seen you do that twice now and I love it. I don't see any questions. Um, 
So if there's no questions, uh, anyone have comments? Uh, I do see something from Danica. Somebody, Listen. yeah. Oh yeah, there is. Is there a way to get the packets for seniors on our neighborhoods that are homebound? Um, yes, Danica, just get in touch with me. If you want information for people with pets, I make that happen all the time. I'll put together um, a, a bag or a bin and I can bring it to you or to a community center or go door to door if we need to. And, and then, uh, the evac packs are available at the Windsor Library in Spanish and in English. So you are certainly welcome to stop by there and pick up a couple. If you need more than that, you're welcome to reach out to me and I'd be happy to um, meet up and get you uh, a, a dozen or whatever it was you need. But if you just need a couple, probably pushing the easy button would be going to the Windsor Library. I have a lot too. I still have a whole box. Okay, well, I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight, and I invite you to come to the November one, which is going to be uh, a completely different on communications and very informative also. So Nancy and Julie, I'm very grateful for you joining us and for your ex sharing your expertise with us. Well, we're grateful for you and for COPE and the invitation, and thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Uh, this will be on our YouTube channel. If you want to uh, watch it again, uh, give me a couple days and I'll get it up there. Thank you. Good night.